Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and welcome back for another educational lesson. Today's topic, guys, is one of the most important topics that you'll ever hear me give a talk or a lesson on. I know a lot of you guys are enamored by my three bar play and it is a wonderful pattern, it's very simple, but today's topic is far more important than that because it deals with account protection and money management. So today's topic is called mental stops versus hard stops. We're gonna talk today about stop losses, guys, protective stop losses. If you're trading without stop losses, you're an idiot, okay? Yes, I'm that bold to say that, okay? So I wanna get into this today. We're gonna head over to the computer here in just a minute, guys, but before I do that, I wanna kinda talk a little bit about this, all right? So we live in a world, and you'll see here a couple on the screen in just a second. We live in a world of high-frequency trading, HFTs, right? Everybody's heard that that word now for at least almost 10 years now, even though they've been out longer than that. Um, I have a little bit of experience with HFTs and I know some folks that work at some very big HFT firms, Hudson River Trading, et cetera, and so forth. The point I'm making, guys, is it's been part of the market for many, many years now. This is not something new, okay? So there are a lot of people out there talking about HFTs running your stop losses. In fact, if you do a Google search for HFT stop running, okay, or something similar to that, you'll get over 500,000 search, re search results, guys, H just on HFT stop hunting, okay? So it's a very hot topic and something I want to take some time to talk about today. Now, take a look on the screen, guys. Yes, HFTs do exist. And yes, they can sometimes make our lives as traders very difficult because yes, there are definitely shakeouts and the kind of shakeouts that happen way faster than we ever used to see 15, 20 years ago. So again, you can see on the screen here, some topping tails, some bottoming tails. I mean, you're talking on some of these charts, guys, five and $10 shakeouts in less than a minute. In fact, the one I'm gonna put up right now, guys, shows not the whole market, but at least 10 or 20 stocks all shaking out at the same time, okay? So yes, there are times when HFTs affect the entire market. In fact, take a look at this slide here on the Qs. Guys, this was the Qs down 16% in about a minute or two. That could have never happened 20 years ago, okay? So yes, we live in a world where we have to accept that we trade with HFTs. Now the question becomes, can we profit next to or alongside of HFTs? And secondarily, because of HFTs, should we be using hard stops in the system stops, okay, or mental stop losses, right? I see tons of YouTube videos out there about, oh, you know, hard stops are a scam. You have to use mental stops because you're gonna get stop hunted by the HFTs, garbage. Garbage and garbage again, guys. I'm gonna say it here in one sentence and then we're gonna go over to the computer and you're gonna to listen to it and I'm gonna break it down why you need hard stops. Guys, if you're using mental stops, you're a fool. You're an idiot. Hard stops are where it's at. Now, I know that that's gonna be a controversial sentence and I know some people are gonna say, Jared, you don't know what you're talking about. Look, I have the results to prove what I'm talking about. I did also used to work on Wall Street as a buy side institutional trader, so I know a little bit about it, not some charlatan out there trying to sell you some more stuff because stop losses are a scam. No, okay, if you're listening to that, you're listening to the wrong advice. Always use hard stops. Always use hard stops. I won't have to say it any more than that because we're gonna talk about it here in just a second. All right, mental stop losses are trouble, disastrous trouble, and I'm gonna show you why. All right, so let's head over to the computer here. I have a nice little lesson for you. It's about 30 minutes long, guys, on why hard stops are way better than mental stop losses. Jared Wesley, Live Traders. Let's head over to the computer. Like I said, guys, today's topic is mental stops versus hard stops. Don't be an idiot, okay? And I understand that this is a little bit of a controversial topic, but it's an area in which I have a lot of experience having been on Wall Street and also being a profitable trader. You're going to wanna to listen to this lecture very carefully. I understand that chart patterns are sexy and chart patterns sell, and we're gonna look at some charts today, particularly as they relate to high frequency trading, but you have to understand that money management is your number one job. So I'm gonna tell you today and show you 
okay? Not just tell you, but show you why you have to have hard stops in the system. That mental stops are a bad idea for 99.9% .9 of traders out there. So let's dig in and take a look at this, guys, okay? So first and foremost, like I said, understand, guys, that money management is your number one job as a trader. Your job isn't to make money. Your job is to protect your backside at all costs, okay? We have too many traders that are risking too much money too soon. So there's a lot of talk out there about the importance of technical charts as well as trade management uh, in a lot of different courses. But the truth is, guys, the most important topic you'll ever learn is money management. If you can't manage your trading account if you can't keep your losing days to a reasonable level, you'll never, ever be profitable, okay? You'll never last long enough to learn how to trade, okay? For some reason, I don't know why or who started it out there, but people talk about blowing up a trading account as a badge of honor. Blowing up a trading account is not a badge of honor. It's just plain stupid. And as you can see down here, guys, it says, by the time most traders appreciate the importance of money management, it's too late. Right? It's too late by that time. Don't make that mistake, okay? So we have two simple rules, guys, at Live Traders. Be objective and use common sense and respect slash protect your trading account. You earn the right to raise risk. Now, you're going, Jared, that's a, what's that have to do with hard stops? It has everything to do with hard stops. Everything to do with hard stops. So every trade, guys, every trade has to have three things. Three things every trade must have. It must have an entry area, okay, an entry area. You're going to use a stop limit order for all of your entries. How much room to give the stop limit? Well, there's criteria for that. Take professional trading strategies, you can learn the criteria for that. How much room to give your stop limit. But every trade has an entry price using a stop limit order. Every trade has a stop loss. This is a stop market order, a protective stop loss using a stop market order. This entry and stop helps you to determine what your risk is, right? So for example, if you buy a stock at $20, like the example says, and your stop loss is $19.80, if you would like to risk $200 on this trade, you need to buy a thousand shares, right? Because 20 cents times 1,000 shares is $200. So if you're wrong, if you're wrong on the trade, you'll lose 200 bucks. If you're right, your goal is to shoot for two to one, two to one risk to reward. So your target is going to be all the way up here. That's called your reward, right? Use a limit order for your targets, a limit order. Use a stop limit order for your entry and use a stop market order for your stop losses. So your entry to stop, that's your risk. Your entry to target, that is your reward. It's very simple. This allows us to predetermine our potential risk to reward, reward to risk, whatever, on every single trade before we take it. We don't take the same share size on every trade because Amazon doesn't trade the same as Microsoft. It doesn't matter if you have a cheap price stock or a high price stock. You buy less shares of the high price stock, more shares of the lower price stock, your risk level will be about the same, okay? So a wider stop like Amazon, you might have a $5 stop loss. So you end up might buy, you might buy 20 shares of that, 30 shares, 40 shares of that, okay? Whereas on a smaller price stock, like the example here, you might have a thousand shares of it. Guys, it evens itself out, but every trade must have these three things. Let me explain a little further. Guys, this is why we have stop losses, okay? This is general stop loss. I'm not into the mental stop versus a hard stop yet. We're talking about why you need stop losses. Remember, we are pattern day traders. We are intraday traders. We use past, we use previous or past technical charts, okay, past price action to determine future price movement. We are not always right. We're gonna bat about 50%. On a really good month, you might bat 60 or 65%, but on an average month, you're gonna have a 50% batting average, which means what? You're wrong just as often as you're right. The question is, how much do you lose on those 50% and how much do you win on the other 50%? If you win two to one when you win, and as long as you lose one when you lose, 
you make great money with a 50% batting average. So let's take a look at these two charts, guys, okay? Let's take a look here. So right here, we have an entry. This could be a swing entry, a core entry. This is a daily chart. The concept stays true for a one-minute chart, five-minute chart. The concept is the same. You get in on this beautiful three-bar play, wide bar, narrow bar, rip. And guys, this stock went from like $16.20 up to $22. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. This is actually a winning trade. And as the stock goes up, it pulls back. It leaves a bottoming tail and goes higher. You raise your stop loss. You raise your stop loss. Okay. And then the stock comes down and you would stop out right here. Your original stop loss is down here at like 1575. So this actually is an example of a great daily three bar play for those swing traders out there. You want to make money overnight or in a week or two, instead of just uh, coming in for two or five minutes trading those charts, this is a great trade. But do you see this? What happens if you don't use stop losses? I'm not talking about mental versus hard just yet. What happens if you don't use a stop loss? The stock ended the day at $10. It started the day, okay, around, or not the day, but so yeah, it did. It started the day around $21 and it ended the day at 10. Instead of a trader, you have now become an investor. Our goal is not to become an investor. And if you didn't take your stop loss here at $19, or if you didn't take it here at 1570, now you own this stock hugely, hugely out of the money. So if you had a 50 cent stop loss right here, right? About 50 cents, and you're down $5. You're down 10 to one on your money. So let's use the last example where we risk $200. If you let this thing come all the way down to $10, instead of losing $200 on this trade, you just lost two thousand dollars on this trade 10 to 1 on this trade and now what you're drinking the hopium you're checking all the news reports right you're checking everything you're checking the earnings you're checking the credit risk the company ceo any you're looking at mad money watching kramer why because you own it way below where you ever thought you would and you bought it up here you didn't take your stop loss you're a gambler you are a gambler you're not a trader okay guys look at this here Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. That's a nice four bar play, right? Wide bar, two narrow bars, rip. Right, right there, like 48.50. Beautiful, three, four bar play. Beautiful textbook. Boom. You're going along, you're going along. It looks pretty good, it looks pretty good. And then wide range red bar, another one. Boom, boom, boom. Oh my gosh, you own the stock at $48.50. And it was all the way down in the $39 area. Now it's back at 4150. You had a stop loss either right here, right around 4770, okay? If you didn't use that, then you had to use down here at 4650. You had to. So you have about a 50 cent stop loss. What happens? The stock drops $9. $9 on a 50 cent stop loss. Guys, 18 to 1 against you. Remember how we said you want to win two when you win and just lose one when you lose? How about minus 18? Your $200 risk is now $3,600. Does any, do you need any more examples to, to know that you have to have a stop loss, that you have to have a stop loss? Let me show you something really sad that I saw on stock twits. Let's take a look because this, this really happens, guys. I took out the person's name because well, I felt bad for them, honestly. All right, take a look at this, guys. December 21st at 9.29 a.m. FTFT is not updating correctly. Hopefully, it will cross 450 again. All right, doesn't sound terrible. Two hours later, FTFT, I'm doomed. I need this to be above 380. Nine minutes later, FTFT, I'm going to have a heart attack. 30 minutes later, FTFT, this is the kicker. I'm down $2,000. I don't know what to do. Hold or cut my losses. Guys, this is not trading. This is what gambling looks like. Okay? This, ladies and gentlemen, is suicide. This is what gambling is. This is why this industry gets such a bad name. Because of people like this. So the general public think that's how we all trade. F no. I would never trade like that. I'm down 2,000. I don't know what to do. Cut my losses or hold. Oh, wait a second. Let me go back. 
What did we say to do? You have an entry, you have a stop, and you have a target on every trade. Entry, stop, target, entry, stop, target. Say it with me again, entry, stop, target. That's my risk. When it hits my stop, I'm gone, gone. Let's go back. I'm $4,000 down in an hour. So bad, had to say it again four minutes later. This, ladies and gentlemen, is gambling. This is sad. When I saw this come through, I thought, this is sad. I feel bad for this person, but they deserve it. Entry, stop, target. Should I hold or cut my losses? Take the stop and move on, friend. Okay, guys, here's another example. So some of you are going, oh, that looks great. No, no, this was a short play. This was a stock that you shorted at $73.80. $73.80, it drops down to like $73.70, and then what happens? Your stop loss is here at $74. See the line? Right there. Why? Because that's where, that's where the resistance area is, right? Once you get over this, that's it. Well, the stock does, okay? It bounces, chops around. You're thinking, oh, okay, I might get lucky. It might hold my stop. Pops above and just goes higher and higher. Pulls back, goes higher and higher. So guys, you're in this with a 20 cent stop loss. 73.80 is your entry. You're hoping it goes lower. It's a short play, short selling. It's how you make money going lower. Your stop is 74. Stock is now at almost $76. So you are a dollar and 78 cents above your stop loss. Again, if you bought a thousand shares of this and your risk was $200, you are now down almost $2,000, right? Your entry is 7380 and it's almost at 7580. That's a two minus $2,000. You need stop losses, guys. You have to have stop losses. Blowing up a trading account is just stupid. It's just stupid. And if you don't believe me, guys, let's take a bigger picture approach. I'm going to go through this very quickly. These charts are a couple of years old that I'm going to show you, but they're even worse right now. They're even worse. Okay. Anyone know this stock? $60 down to five, back to 26. I'll give you a hint. It's somewhere around 12 or $13 right now. Okay. It's actually lower than $26. I'll give you another hint. It's a Dow 30 stock. It's one of the original Dow 30 stocks. How's that investment going for you? See this 15 year period, guys? How's that investment going for you, right? How is that investment going for you, okay? It's not. Now imagine this was a trade, not a long-term investment. Take out the years on the top. Take out the years. Imagine instead of the year 2000, 2001, 2000, imagine it's one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute. Wow, okay, let's do it again. How's that working for you? You buy a breakout over here at $500. You buy a breakout. You get a three bar play forming on a monthly chart, three bar play. Boom. How are you feeling now? 550 down to 970, back to 53. Hint, it had a reverse split. Reverse split. Are you guys understanding how important stop losses are yet? Are you? Funny thing is, I'll get. 100,000 people, 200,000 people to watch my three bar play video and maybe 20,000 will watch this video. You all need to watch this video because this is far more important. Right here, a breakout over $1,400, a breakout right there. Boom, tanks, 1,400 down to 55 bucks. You ready? Yeah, these were some small companies, you know, because this can't happen to anybody, right? Oh, General Electric. Huh, that's not a big company, right? Nah. Citigroup, nah, that's another small one, huh? AIG, yeah, another tiny company. You know, just like Bear Stearns and Enron and WorldCom. So if you don't think, if you think this is a joke, this should shake you up a little bit. This can happen to any company at any time. General Electric, Citigroup, AIG, Bear Stearns, Enron, WorldCom, MCI. These are huge, multi-billion dollar companies, blue chip companies, the kind you buy and hold forever. Guys, this can happen on those companies on a monthly chart. It can happen to your trade on a five minute chart. Don't think it can't. Money management is your number one job. Money management is your number one job. Now guys, what's the one thing that most traders lack in this world? I'll give you a second to think about it. What's the one thing that most traders lack? I'll give you a hint, it begins with a D. It's called discipline. 
Discipline. Most traders lack discipline. Money management's your number one job, okay? So if you're not managing your account first, if you're not taking your stop losses, you're doomed from the start. You're doomed from the start. Okay, so now I wanna talk a little bit about HFTs and then we'll talk about hard stops versus soft stops, okay? Guys, I'm not here to tell you that HFTs don't exist. We don't live in a perfect world. We trade in an imperfect world, okay? Just have a look at these charts here. Exxon Mobil, MHR, PCG, A, TRLA, the SPY. Look at this, look at this shakeout. Shake, then ripped higher. Look at this shakeout. Shake, and then went sideways. Shake, went higher. Shake, went lower. Shake, went lower. Guys, some of these were nice trades. Look at this trigger right here, then shook out, and then came right back down on TRLA. Look at this one here. Oh my gosh, it happens on the SPY. I'm not here to tell you that HFTs don't exist. I'm not here to tell you that this doesn't happen ever, okay? We'll go more, one more. OMG, look at this NOV, guys. This is a one minute chart. It went from $82 to 90 and back down in less than a minute. 82 to 90 and 90 back to 82 in less than one minute. This stuff, it really does happen. It really does happen. So the question is, how often does it happen? Guys, not that often, okay? This kind of stuff does not happen that often, all right? It might happen on 10, maybe 20% of your trades. I'm gonna repeat that. It might happen on 10%, maybe 20% of your trades, okay? So now that you know it only happens 10 to 20% of the time, all right, let's talk about hard versus mental stops. First and foremost, what is the difference? What is a hard stop, you ask? What is that, Jared? What's a hard stop? Guys, a hard stop is a stop loss in the system where you set a bracket order or a stop market order. So I've taken two platforms. I use TradeStation now, but I have used Fusion in the past. Both of these are my accounts, okay? You can see JWE, J Wesley, and this is my account number you see from all of my other videos, all right? Hard stop means I'm in this trade on SGMO. I'm in it, okay? The stock has moved in my direction. I've put my stop below break even. For those of you going, how are you making money with the stock going down? It's called shorting. I get emails on it every day. It's called shorting. Google it if you have to, okay? So right here, that is a stop market, stop market order. And down here is a limit order for my target. My target is 1555 on this, okay? What this means is if this stock comes back against me, comes back to 1645, the computer will take me out. My platform will take me out, okay? It's set for stop market on my stop loss and limit for my target, okay? Now, over here is a different style platform. Many of you are probably using this style platform. I call this the old school style because I like the TradeStation version much better. This style on the left with the ladder is called is from TradeStation. It's their matrix, okay? Now, hard stop target. See it in here? See where it says price market? So it says right here, BAC sell 100 shares market. The stop price is 1666. What does this mean? What this simply means is if this stock, all right, BAC, if this stock comes down to 1666, my order will get triggered at a market price and I will get filled at whatever the market price is. Could be 1666, could be 1665, could be 1664, you might take some slippage. BAC, you probably won't, but anyway. So if it goes to 1666, the computer will automatically exit the position for me, okay? Target is set at a limit order at 1672. And you can see it down here, BAC long 100 shares. I entered at $16.69. My stop loss is 1666, three cents in this case. And my target is 1672, all right? You can see it. That's the bracket, that's the hard stop. This is what we call a hard stop where you literally put it in the system and you don't touch it. You let the computer take you out because if it gets below that price point on a long, or in this case on the left, above that price point, you wanna get out. You're telling the computer, get me out if the stock trades at that level. That's called a hard stop, all right? And you can see here, still a pretty decent day, 2,300 bucks. But what's the difference between a hard stop and a mental stop? Guys, a mental stop means, okay, hear me out. 
as this trade here on the left, as this goes back against you, goes to 1605, goes to 1615, goes to 16, as it gets close, you're going to manually get out of the position manually get out of the position. You're not going to let the computer automatically get you out. You're going to manually get out. Now, people go, well, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you let the computer get you out? The reason that people think falsely that they're going to let the computer get them out, or sorry, not let the computer get, they're going to use a mental stop loss is they believe their broker and other HFTs are stop hunting. They're literally looking for your stop loss and they're going to hunt it, shake it out, meaning let this stock go all the way up to 1665, then come right back down. Or in the BAC example, 1666 is your stop. You're going to let the stop come down to 1664 and then bounce right back up. They're hunting for your stop loss because they can see your order. I have some news for you. One, your broker is not hunting your stop. Okay, your broker is not hunting your stop loss. Sometimes high frequency trading machines do hunt stop losses. Sometimes this is true. Sometimes they hunt support and resistance areas where they think there will be more shares available. All right, based off of support and resistance, technical analysis. This is true. Sometimes HFTs do this. Guys, now some of you are thinking, well, you know, maybe that mental stop loss sounds kind of good. You know, I don't want to just get triggered out and then automatically watch the stock go against me. I don't want that to happen. Well, I don't blame you. I don't want that to happen either, okay? I don't. But the truth of the matter is, it does happen. Let me give you an example, okay? Here's a great example, guys. Here's two examples of a stock, okay? This is the same stock on a one minute and a five minute. You have a beautiful breakout right here at $19. The stock goes up to $19.20, shakes out and stops everybody out down here, and then goes right back up. Take a look at it on the five minute. Now, you could have had your stop loss right here. You could have had your stop loss right here. So the stock goes up to $19.18 and then shakes out and immediately goes back up. Now you're all thinking, oh, mental stops are a great idea. Because if I didn't have my hard stop in the system, I would have never gotten stopped out and this thing would have worked. Mental stops are great. Wrong. Mental stops are a sucker's game, okay, in which you're going to cost yourself a lot of money. Let's try it again. Here's a little bit of a wedge flag slash four bar play. It's more of a flag than anything, right? You get in right here. Your stop is right here. The stock goes up, shakes out right there and then comes back up and you go, oh my gosh, I got shaken and then it stops you again, okay? Now, this is an example, guys, if we go back to this one where you're right. Sometimes you get shaken out of trades. This is called the life of a trader. It's just the way it is, okay? It's just the way it is. And not all trades work, guys, okay? Not all trades work. So when we talk about hard stops, that's putting your stop in the system. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to tell you in a couple minutes, guys, how you can avoid this. All right. You're going, oh, is there a way around it? Yes. First and foremost, use hard stops. Okay. You will get shaken out sometimes. It does happen. Not all trades work. Okay. And then there's scenarios like this. Here's a beautiful three bar play. You enter at 229, your stops at, right, sorry, not entry 222, entry at 229.50, probably fix that, be a good idea, right about there, perfect, okay? All right, so you're in at 229.50, your stops at 229, goes up, oh, comes down and stops you out. You don't take your stop, bounces back up, comes back down, you don't take your stop, goes sideways and eventually works. And in this case, you go, yes, hard stops stink. But guys, do you remember anything we saw a couple minutes ago? Do I need to go back and show you? I think we do. Do you remember this? They don't all come back. They don't all come back. Can I need to repeat it one more time? They don't all come back. This stock isn't coming back. This stock isn't coming back. So you plan on losing $200 in that trade I just showed you. You didn't take your stop loss because you think HFTs are out stop hunting and you didn't get your stop loss in in time, right? And then maybe it bounces up a little 
and then tanks. Maybe, guess what? Maybe it never bounces. Maybe it just takes out your stop loss right here and just keeps going lower. Then you're no longer a trader. You're a gambler and an investor. I want to be in and out of my trades in five to 30 minutes. I don't want to hold BVSN for a month just praying and hoping it comes back. Now think about the time value, the, the time value of money. You have to hold BVSN now because you don't have a choice. You're supposed to lose $200, but now you're down $3,600. Now it's $3,600 out of your account that you can no longer use. And now the buying power that it cost you for this trade, you can no longer lose. And now all of a sudden you're doing research and homework on BVSN because you can't wait for it to come back up. And then you become this person. Is this all coming back full circle now? Oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I'm down 2,000, now I'm down 4,000, now I'm down 6,000, what should I do? Just go to Vegas, baby, because you have a better chance in Vegas than you do here trading doing this BS, okay? Guys, this stuff really happens. This is a short play that goes against you. You're supposed to lose 200, you lose 2,000. Guess what? For you mental stop people, what are you gonna do? Let me give you a scenario that really, really actually happens, okay? I want you to think about it. You're in three trades at the same time. You have mental stops on all three of them, okay? Mental stops on all three of them. So for example, all right, you're in this trade right here short. You wanna get out at 74 bucks. You go, no, but I don't wanna get shaken out. So this thing goes against your stop and comes back below and you go, whew, good. And remember, you're in two other trades. And then boom, that happens. Where are you getting out now? Are you gonna man up and take the loss at 74.30? Or do you still think because of the topping tail and the resistance up here, because of the topping tail, the resistance and the flat two, that's gonna pivot and come back down? That's what you think. So you're not gonna take your stop at 74.40 either because you think it's coming back down. And this is just a fake shakeout. And then it keeps going against you. And then it gets above 74.60. You go, well, that's got to be where it's coming back down. Now it, oh, it's not coming back down. Now what? Keeps going higher. So when you use those mental stops, when do you actually get out of the trade? In this scenario, never. Because it never gives you the opportunity to get out because it continually looks like it's going to come back in your favor. It leaves a small top until you think it's gonna come back in your favor and you were smart by using a mental stop. Nope, it goes against you some more. Then you go, ooh, there's some resistance here. There's a topping tail doji bar, of course. It's gonna break 74.20 and come back down and it never does. So using a mental stop, where are you actually gonna get out? You're not. You're just gonna ride this thing to hell and you're gonna lose two grand on it. And maybe it goes to $100 and you blow up an account and you go, ooh, hard lesson learned. Stupid lesson learned. Stupid lesson learned, okay? Guys, hard stops in the system. Hard stops. This is what a hard stop looks like, remember? Hard stop in the system. Hard stop in the system. Will you get tagged sometimes? Yes, I'm gonna show you how to mitigate it though in just a second, okay? Hard stop in the system. Now, like I said, not all trades work. Guys, I took a nice three bar play on AIG here, right? This is a stock that kind of looked lower and then it left this big old bottoming tail and then engulfed right over here, right? Left a big old bottoming tail and then it engulfed one higher, take a little three bar play, stop and just drop. This is a trade that I was up 280, I was actually up $310 on. I stopped out, I lost 360 bucks, $359. This is stock that started really nice and then came back against me. It just didn't work. And look, just didn't work, just didn't work. Guys, what if I had rode this down to like 50 bucks? I would have lost, well, I don't know, $1,000 on it. I would have lost at least three to one. They don't all work. See it? Not all trades work. That's life. That's just life. Look at it again. Here's another trade. Okay, guys, it's a beautiful 15 minute three bar play on TME. I mean, textbook. I get in the stock, okay, I add a little to my position. All right, it's dropping, it's dropping, it's looking good. My target's down here, 14 bucks, looking good. What happened? I put this chart here. This is the original entry chart right here on the right, right there. And this is what happened later. It dropped right there, it came back up 
barely held the stop loss, pulled back down, and then went against me. And I lost. I actually didn't lose. I made $127. Why? I moved my stop to break even. But you get the point. It didn't work. It ultimately stopped out. This is one where it stopped out and I made 127 instead of 500, but it didn't work is the point. It didn't work, okay? Not all trades work, but you don't need them to. You only need 50% of your trades to work to make money. And guys, what if you used a mental stop loss and then this happens to you? That bar comes in. You're in three trades. Are you going to be able to, you're on two minute charts on three different trades, guys, at 9.38 in the morning, 9.45 in the morning, 9.50 in the morning. Are you going to be able to get to all three of those trades? What if, okay, what if, guys, you get one of those flashes in the market? News report comes out and the market tanks. You're not going to be able to get to all three of your positions fast enough. So instead of losing 200, 200, 200, maybe 600, bad day, you lose three. Oh my gosh, now you're down $8,000 because this didn't come back, it kept going. This didn't come back, it kept going. Just between these two trades, you're down five or six grand. Just between these two trades. Mental stops are stupid, stupid. Yes, I'm yelling a little bit. I know some of you don't like that. I'm trying to save you guys from blowing up your damn trading account. Stop being stupid. Okay, you're gonna get shaken out once in a while. Let's go take a look, guys. Okay, because you need to see it. It's going to happen sometimes. All right, it's going to happen sometimes. All right, you're going to get shaken out once in a while. That's life. Okay, that's just the way life works. And it's gonna work, and you're gonna bang your fist on the desk and be pissed. But you're not going to. Let me show you how to mitigate. Okay, before I do that though, guys, remember I said they don't all work? Remember? Okay, I said they don't all work. They don't, but you know what? Enough of them work, guys, that you don't have to worry about it. This is a trade. I made over $700 on this, guys. Perfect four bar play. Wide bar, narrow bar, narrow bar, drop over $700, okay, on this trade. Beautiful. Next, okay, what about this one right here? Wide bar, narrow bar, drop, three bar play, guys. I'm up over 500. I'm not even out of it yet. Up over $500 on this one. Next, let's take a look at another one. Okay, how about this one? This little three bar play on WB. All right, closed out $700 on this, guys. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, here's one on Apple. All right, there's the dollar gainers scan I keep telling you guys about. How do I find these? You scan dollar gainers and dollar losers, guys. This is a pre market scan. Look at the gap on Apple, it gapped over three or four red bars over a pivot. This is a pre market dollar gainers scan. 790,000 is huge pre-market volume. That's institutional money, okay? Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. Wide bar, narrow bar, rip. Guys, when you win, you're gonna win two to one, three to one. If I lose 300 on a loss, so what? As long as I win six, seven, 800 on my winner, I'm good. I'm good, totally good, okay? Now, what if? Have you ever considered this? Have you ever considered this? re-entering your full stop outs. Taking a trade that shook you out for a full stop, let's say you're risking 200 and you go minus 200, getting back in at the original entry price, not caring if there's a pattern. So the first trade is a pattern, a beautiful pattern. First trade, beautiful pattern. It stops you out full. Get back in as soon as it re-triggers the old entry price. Same entry, same stop. Same target. I'll repeat this, so don't send me 100 emails on it. You re-enter at the same price as the original entry, using the same stop as the original entry, using the same target as the original entry. I don't care if there's a pattern on the second trade. First trade, got to have a pattern. Second trade, just get back in. Watch. What would have happened here if you got back in? Remember, you saw this one. I showed it to you twice already. You got in at 19, you got shaken out and stopped out. What happened if you got right back in at $19? Right back in, okay? Using the same stop loss. Boom, there's your two to one. You got right back in at 19 with your stop at 18.80, you got two to one. So instead of minus 200 for the day, now you're plus 200. You took the stop out and you got right back in it and you made two to one on your money. You're not losing that day, you're winning that day, okay? You're winning that day. Let's take a look at another one, all right? Ooh, how about this beautiful three bar play? Wide bar, narrow bar, narrow bar, and it triggers right there. 
right? Initial trigger right there, 106.75. Stop down here at 105.75, right? Right there. It's almost like a little wedge. I'll call it a four bar play slash wedge. That's the original entry. What happens? Stock stops you out. You lose your 200 bucks here. Stops you out. What do you do? Get right back in it up here. Now, you could have gotten back in over here because there's a buy setup, but let's say you didn't do that. Get right back in over here. Get right back in at 106.75. By 105.75, guys, it went to almost, it went to 110.75. It went four to one on your money by getting back in the trade. Look to re enter. Just get back in it. Get back in it. Now, some of you are still thinking, well, I'm going to use those mental stops. I don't even want to take the stop loss. All right, let's go back and remind you guys. Let's do it one more time. Guys, they don't all come back. They don't all come back. Right? This one triggered. Stop. You think, oh, okay, right here. I'm going to get back in when it, no, it just kept going lower. You can't take the chance. It only takes one or two nasty trades to blow up your trading account. Guys, if you didn't take stop loss on any trade, most of the time you'd get away with it. I'll repeat this very slowly. If you took no stop losses on your trades, most of the time you would get away with it and the stock would come back up and you could get out most of the time, 80 to 85% of the time. What happens on the other 10 or 15% of the time? It blows up your account. It blows up your trading account. See it right here? It blows it up. You do two of these in a day, poof, trading account's gone. Your dreams of freedom, flexibility, being your own boss, trading from Japan, trading from Pennsylvania, from Arizona, from California, like I will do all this year. I'm going to California in a couple weeks, going to Japan a week after. Guys, all those dreams are gone, kaput, because you were stupid, okay? Because you were stupid. Think Top Gun, all right? Don't leave your wingman. Don't leave your wingman, okay? Put a hard stop in the system and let it tag you. If you want to give it a little extra room, that's up to you, but you put the hard stop in the system. Guys, re-entering your stop outs is how you mitigate. Now, I'm going to show you something here on the next slide. I'm going to show you something, but it's very important that you understand. These are for my trades. I don't know if the same thing will happen for your trades. These are for my trades, my trades, but I'm showing you my experience. I have found that 84% of trades that stop me out, okay? If I get back in with the same entry price and the same stop price, they work the second time. 84% they work the second time around. So if 50% of my trades stop out, Okay. And of those 50% that stop out, maybe only 15% re-trigger, maybe only 15% re-trigger. But if they re-trigger my same entry, my same stop, they work 84% of the time. So if you took a hundred trades a month, 50 winners, 50, I don't take this many trades a month, guys. I take about 60 trades a month, but 50 winners and 50 losers. Okay. So if 25 stops give a potential re-entry, all right. It's a little less than that, in my opinion. It's about more like 15. So let's skip this one. Let's go down here. So if only 15 give a re-entry, that's 12 winners and three losers, right? If 15 of 50, 50 losers, 15 of them actually re-enter. Well, you have 12 winners and three losers. That's 84%, okay? You get 24R on your winners and 3R on your losers. That's an additional 21R by re-entering stopouts. Guys, you can't help stopping out. Stopping out is part of trading. Getting shaken out is part of trading. Occasionally having your stop hunted down is part of trading. That's just life. That's just trading life, okay? But if you don't take your stop, your trading life might be over. So when we talk about mental stops versus hard stops, you never, ever Use mental stops. Yes, I yelled right now. It's going to be all staticky on the mic. You never use mental stops. That's just dumb. Guys, what if you have to go to the bathroom? What if your internet goes down? I've had it happen to me. Have you had it happen to you? What if your platform freezes? Have you ever had that happen to you? So think about what I just said, okay? So we'll go back up. All right, hold on. Let me put it in here. Hard stops. Let's give you a slew of reasons other than just logistically it might not come back. Platform freezes, it happens. Your internet goes down, it happens. 
Your electricity gets out. Somebody hits a telephone pole. Oh, it's happened to me through the years. You're like, oh, why is all the power out? Somebody hit a phone pole. They got in a car accident. Okay. What if you just have too many open trades, three open trades? You can't manage them all at the same time effectively with mental stops. Okay. And what if a stock is really spready and whippy and it just whips against you really nasty? That's another reason, okay? Guys, mental stops are stupid. They're just dumb. I know some of you are gonna fight me on this to the end of time, but I'm telling you, from somebody who's turned 2,000 into over 50 in one year and I turned 2,500 into over $100,000 in a year, I know what stop losses are like and I take them. 50% of the time, I get tagged. I lose, right? This happens, guys. Let's show it one more time. Everybody's, you don't show your losers. This happens 50% of the time. But you know what also happens 50% of the time? This. This happens 50% of the time. You know what also happens 50% of the time? This happens 50%. Did I mention this happens? Here's another one. This happens 50% of the time too. I'm okay, guys. See it? I'm okay. Losing 350 on this. When... I just won 700 on that, all right? And I took another 700 on this, or sorry, 500 on this. I took 700 on this. I'm okay with that, okay? And when I do get shaken, guess what I do? I re-enter them. I just get back in them. I re-enter them at the original entry price with the same stop. Why? Because my statistics show 84% of the time, the re-entry works, all right? The re-entry works. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, all right? If you guys want to contact me, guys, I'll put it on the screen right now, guys. It's Jared Wesley at LiveTraders.com. Jared, sorry, I said Jared Wesley, my apologies. Jared, J-A-R-E-D, Jared at LiveTraders.com. If you want to check me out on Stock Twits, I am Scalpmaster, at Scalpmaster. Okay, if you want to check me out on Instagram, I got a cool Instagram page. I don't post as much as I used to. I'm Scalpmaster1 on Instagram. If you want to check me out on Twitter, I'm Scoutmaster on Twitter. So Scoutmaster on Stop Twits, Scoutmaster on Twitter, and Scoutmaster1 on Instagram. And if you want to email me, Jared, J-A-R-E-D, at LiveTraders.com. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I'm saying this to you because, yeah, patterns are sexy. Charts are sexy. Account management's number one. Don't use mental stops, guys. The number one problem people have in this business is a lack of discipline a lack of discipline, guys. Put a hard stop in the system and stick to it. I'm not sugarcoating this like everybody else is. They're trying to sell you some of this or sell you some. I'm telling you how to protect your account. Hard stops. Jared Wesley of Live Traders, I hope you enjoyed this lecture, guys. I'll talk to you again in the future. Don't forget to subscribe. Take care, guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.